How can a piece of plastic and some metal pay for this? I mean, really, you go to Macca's, you tap your card and bang, money go out, make chicken go in. But how does it work? Well, my job today is to explain how this thing allows you to buy shit with science. To start, each card is made of several layers of different plastics and metals. And each card has three methods of transaction. The black strip at the back of the card, the metal chip on the side, and obviously the RFID sensor. Now, the ink and the chip are clearly visible on the card, but the RFID sensor is all snug and warm in between the plastic layers. He looks so cute in there, so let's just let him rest a while while we talk about the other two. Okay, so first is the strip of black ink on the back of the card. Now, come closer. I have a secret to tell you. That black ink is magnetic. And ooh wee is it packed with all important information about your bank account. Okay, magnets. Magnets have a special property to them where they can attract or repel certain metals. And this specific ink has tiny little itty bitty magnets embedded in it. And as we learned as babies, magnets can point in two directions, north and south. When you swipe the card at the terminal, it passes over a sensor that detects the magnet's directions as the card moves. Sounds simple, right? Well, this is where it gets nerdy. The terminal then reads the north and south directions and converts them to zeros and ones, otherwise known as binary digits. Binary digits are basically just a way of counting and representing values using only two digits, zeros and ones. And it is just like our everyday counting system, where we use digits from zero to nine before adding a new place value, binary adds a new place value after every one. So zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, so on and so forth. Now the reason we use our system is because we have 10 fingers and toes, so it's easy for us to understand and communicate. Electronics, however, use binary because it's the most efficient way to have on and off switches or electrical signals that have true and false states. These ones and zeros are represented in the transistors that are inside all computer chips that power the modern world. For example, the current generation iPhone, the iPhone 15, has 19 billion transistors all creating complex mathematical equations to allow you to do things like searching up the hub on your phone while you're in the shower. When you type those seven letters, just know that billions of transistors are creating a sequence of ones and zeros by allowing or blocking electricity through them like an on and off switch. This sequence is then decoded, and this code allows you to polish that sword. Oh, and I almost forgot, electricity. Well, electricity is that magical thing that we all use every day and can't live without, but yet none of us have any idea how it works. So yeah, the electrical binary code then is decoded by the terminal into a readable format to read things like your card number, your expiration date, and other things to verify the transaction. It then shoots all that over to the bank's database and completes the transaction. But what about the chip on the side of your card? Well, instead of using magnets this time, we spice it up a little. The chip contains a small computer processor and memory, just like your computer or your phone. I want you to think of the processor as the brain of the chip and the memory as the storage space. The brain processes the data and makes sure all the tools are there to go, and the memory stores all the data needed prior to make the transaction happen. When you insert your card into the terminal, the chip high fives the receiver inside and exchanges some encrypted messages using the binary system. The chip then creates a unique code for each transaction, which is basically like a secret password that changes every time you use your card. Like those cool bars in the movies that change passwords every night. This makes it nearly impossible for someone to copy, unlike the magnetic ink, which can be duplicated. The chip then checks all the data and verifies it. And if everything seems chill, it will give the thumbs up and complete that purchase for that Thanos singlet you've always wanted. Still with me? Okay. But how are we able to just tap any part of the card to make a transaction? Well, RFID works differently to both. It doesn't use magnets or electronic chips. Instead, it uses radio waves. Now, radio waves are basically invisible energy waves that travel through the air. The reason they're invisible is because they sit outside the visible spectrum of light for humans. So while we see red, green, and blue, radio waves just whiz right by you. Now, whoever found out about this invisible electromagnetic spectrum, bravo to you. I'll try to explain this wizardry as best I can. Imagine tossing a pebble into a calm pond and seeing ripples spread out. Radio waves are similar, but instead of water, they travel through the air in all directions from their source. What the geniuses in the world found out is you can hook data into the signal and then ride that data all the way through the radio wave. You do this in a process called modulation. Modulation has one signal, which is the message signal that has the data we want to transmit, in this case, our payment information, and one carrier signal that has a much stronger frequency to carry that message. It also doesn't need a battery because it takes the power from the antenna on the terminal, which is just mind blowing to me. Now RFID is used in car keys, gym door readers, and clothing at stores, and the chips that we have in our pets against their will. Our bank card's RFID chip is constantly sending out a weak transmission signal. 
which is why you always hear about having RFID protection for your wallet. You know, all those Ridge wallet sponsorships on YouTube videos you've skipped through over the years. Okay, so when you tap on the terminal, it picks up that signal via a receiver. That receiver then converts the radio frequency into readable electrical data. And obviously like the previous methods, if all the data makes sense, then you're good to go. So yeah, I guess that was the super duper basic science behind how these things can pay for these things. Thanks for watching. Feel free to send me a photo of the front and back of your card so I can explain in the future how those numbers allow you to purchase items online.